Hello everybody, welcome back to the dev blog. Today, it's time for a brainstorm session. So, brainstorming is one of those things that, like it or hate it, you're gonna have to do if you're making a sub game. And uh, sometimes it's really easier to lay ideas out on paper rather than in code. And for obvious reasons, I mean, when you're doing stuff in code, you, of course, have to know all the code. And uh, sometimes some of the code concepts you might have to learn as you're, you know, trying to figure out exactly how it is that your mod is going to work. Or bigger picture, your subgame. So I'm going to be doing some brainstorming in this episode. There won't be any coding. Actually, I'm going to be designing several form specs. Uh, I've got four squares here. That might be all we do. I don't know. Um, but what I have in mind is I'm going to have a node uh, that's going to have the ship ball background and it's going to have like a computer monitor on one half of it here. And then it's going to have like a speaker over here. And then uh, maybe it's going to have a card reader and a, I wouldn't call it a dispenser, but like a, a printer here where it can like print out a receipt pretty much. And then on the computer monitor, there's going to be different text and information that you can pick up and stuff. Now, uh, as I said, pen and paper works well. Obviously, pen and paper wouldn't work quite so well for a video. So I could film it with a video camera, but figured why did that one have this beautiful Wacom graphics tablet and software to boot? So, by the way, this is uh, Krita I'm using. Krita, I don't, I don't know how it's supposed to be pronounced, but right here, uh, free to download, Krita.org, I think, or .com. I don't know if you just type in Krita, it'll pull it right up. I'm available Windows, Mac, Linux. Uh, Probably anything else that's open source, so you can build it if you need to, I guess, for your architecture. But anyways, this is pretty much going to be the layout of the form specs in the uh, on like this computer interface. So what I'm thinking is either have a top menu or a bottom menu, and I haven't decided which yet, but it doesn't really matter because the menu is pretty much going to stay consistent throughout all of them. And I'm thinking maybe four buttons up top here and we'll have one that says status well actually that first one probably should have said home but we'll make the last one here say home uh, we'll have the log and I'm not sure what else will be there now this is gonna be the home screen this top menu <clears throat> Excuse me. This top menu is going to show or bottom or side. Wherever I end up putting it, it'll be top or bottom, not side. But wherever I end up putting it, it's going to be on all of the screens. And I'm only going to draw it on this first one because there's really no point in drawing it four times. So for the home screen, uh, you're pretty much going to have these different menu options. And then we'll have some kind of a, a picture put in here, I think. So we'll do something like this with... Uh, like a logo of whoever this space company is. So maybe something like a, a rocket ship. I know, I have mad skills, bro. Yep, because that is totally what a rocket ship looks like. Uh, so maybe we'll have that and there'll be like, you know, a planet here that has some rings going around it. And, you know, some stars out there as well. And, of course, flames. Flames coming out the bottom of the rock ship. Don't want to forget about those. So we'll have, like, the logo there. And then uh, we'll have just a brief a brief message here. And I don't know what the message is going to say. But fortunately, I don't need to, to design the layout. So we'll just have a brief message showing there. And then down at the bottom here, there'll be a 
a breakaway line. And now I don't know if I can put like horizontal lines in a form spec. Probably can't. Uh, I might be able to use just an image that's a couple pixels wide and stretch it to fill the screen. I'm not sure. But see, that's why we do brainstorming like this. Because I don't need to worry about any of that stuff right now. That's something I worry about when I come to the coding part. And if it can't be done, well, then we have to scratch the idea. Or at least change the idea. And then in the bottom area here, um, we'll do like an error log. Which it would be cool to pull in like the the player's name. Uh, we'll just use dollar sign for variable. And I should be able to because I'm going to know who the players that clicked on this. So we'll do player or maybe, yeah, um, parenthesis S, deep sleep, interrupted, aborted. So it's an error that you even woke up. And then, uh, you know, maybe like life support systems. At 40%. You know, and there'll just be just some different errors showing here on the home screen. Then we have our status screen. Which is pretty much going to be broken again if I can make these kind of lines. And I don't know if I can. I can do text as boxes though. I figured that out. So if I can't do the lines, I can just do text boxes and hope people are smart to figure out, oh, hey, there's a space between this text and this text. They're their own things. Uh, so status is going to have pretty much the error log down here, which is the same as that. Then over here, we're going to have like um, ship health. should be an L in there, ship health. And you'll have something like engines, O2 content, uh, fuel, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Different stuff you would expect the ship to be reporting on. And then something about um, like global info. And that would have stuff like location which we don't know the date which we don't know uh, passenger number which again we don't know because so many systems are down that looks like it's an L there we go date um, what other global information would we maybe want on here Something about, uh, I don't know, just stuff that uh, would be reported in a status report. And then we have the log, which is kind of actually a cop-out, because the log is just going to give up a, uh, do I want to say warning, or maybe I'll do like, access denied and that'll be I don't know if I can do different font colors I don't think I can but if possible I would put that as a different font and then just put a message here about um, you do not have sufficient and ship clearance to view this information. So it kind of gives the idea that like 
you know, the captain and the crew members could use this log to, you know, see information and whatever, but because you're just a passenger who has woken from the cyber sleep, you don't get access to any of that. And then this last one, I don't know what I'm going to put in there. Maybe, um, uh, I don't, I don't know what I would put in this last one. Um, I, I don't know. Like, it'd be cool if I could do, say, like a player information tab and have your health, um, your money. But there's really no way to get that because the money is going to be physical objects. Physical objects in a digital game, yeah, they're not actually like physical, physical objects, but they're going to be craft items. So it's not something that's stored in Meta or a database or anything. So there's really no way that the form spec could access that. I could get the player's health, and I could get the uh, hydration level and hunger level, but I don't know what the point of displaying that would really be when it already shows right on your HUD. So I don't really think that's very useful. Um, a map would be cool, but I'm going to have these in multiple locations, and I'd really have no way of the map showing which location you're at, because it would just be showing a picture, and the picture would be the same on everything. I would have to make each... Uh, each node um, unique. So it would have to be one node for every single one that's put in the spaceship. With It would have the same map picture, but it's a red dot in a different location, saying you are here. Or I could just do like an overview map and not provide a you are here or anything, but I don't, I don't really know what the point of doing that would be. Now, admittedly, you're not going to have the HUD bar map, so maybe I should. I don't know if map is... Yeah, we'll do map. And we'll figure out how we're going to do that later. Um, and this will just pretty much be broken into, say, three parts. Uh, that's a horribly curvy line, but whatever. And this will be... Uh, top level and that's where you start you'll start someplace in a berth then we'll have the middle level and that's mostly going to be like crew stuff and the top level is going to have the stores ah uh, wait I'm going to change that vending machines Uh, there'll be the vending machines up top. There'll be the kind of everything up to like the food, which will also be with vending machines, but clothing. Pretty much all of that. And this is where the escape pods will be located as well. The middle level is pretty much the crew stuff. So there's uh, bunkers. Bunkers? I don't think that's the right word. Berths. No, I don't know if that's the right word either. Uh, but they'll be all of their quarters. Um, they'll be all of the uh, consoles. Consoles. Um, you know, like the the technical stuff. Stuff. Yep. And then the bottom level will be engines, machines, and trash. So the idea kind of is I'm going to set up some like technic 
things with Technic and Pipeworks, and basically they'll just run in a loop, honestly, that, uh, will, like, probably a grinder and a furnace, and it'll just grind ores, send them to the furnace, the furnace will cook them, they'll go in a chest, and they'll come from that chest back to the grinder, and it'll just loop. It doesn't have to really do anything, it's just there. So if somebody does go down to the bottom level, there's something there for them to see. Engines, um, it's going to be a lot of locked doors, honestly. And this will have lots of locked doors as well. Because, um, yeah, a lot of stuff that the crew can get into, there's no reason that you should be able to. So these doors might have, um, card readers. And those I can actually do as, um, not even doing them as doors. Because they won't be able to open. Nobody that's going to join the game is going to be able to get into those rooms. So they can really just be a regular node. And they'll have, it'll have a texture on it for the card reader on the door. Or I could even make a little card reader node that would just sit right next to the door and stick off of the wall and uh yeah have like a little red light on it and it could just sit there the door doesn't have to be a door it's just a piece of mesh that maybe has a window in it maybe not um if i did put windows in them i'd obviously have to put something in the rooms if the the doors don't have windows there doesn't need anything in them so that's probably the easiest way um Don Batman has uh, a My Doors mod, and it has some nice spaceship doors, so I may use some of those, um, and I could actually have two versions of this card reader, one with a red light and one with a green light, and the red light, those doors wouldn't even be real doors, they wouldn't be able to open, and the green light would be ones that the doors are passable, um, and that would be kind of cool. Where if there's a green light, it means you can go through the door. And, you know, it could stand for, you know, on a, in a lockdown situation, the ship wants to be able to make every door locked. So only people that are, you know, captain and crew can go from place to place. And pretty much passengers all have to stay in their area because they can't get through these doors. Or maybe potential, you know, some passengers could, some couldn't. It all depends on which ID cards are programmed in the system to be able to open and close these doors. I think that's pretty realistic for a, uh, a spaceship that's traveling in this fashion with people in a deep level, the deep level of like cyber sleep or where they freeze the bodies or something and they thaw them and they come back or like a, <clears throat> maybe like a medically induced coma or something that you go into and you go on this spaceship and it's flying for, you know, years and years and years. And when you arrive wherever the spaceship's going to this colony on some distant planet, they just wake you up and you haven't aged. Uh, it's pretty much just been, like, pumping nutrients into your body and taking out the bad stuff. And so for you, it, you know, it feels like it's a second or two and you're there. And the captain's crew, you know, they all go on there in their 20s and they get there and they're in their 30s or something. Um, yeah, just kind of lots of ideas to throw around here. So there we have it. That's kind of my, my brainstorm session. And this is for one node, one element of that node. Um, this doesn't really do me anything other than this is kind of what I have in mind for the form spec. Um, because I am doing all the work on this myself, a lot of the brainstorming I don't even necessarily have to do because I'm not trying to convey ideas to other people necessarily because I'm doing all the coding, I'm doing all the graphics, you know, everything I'm doing myself. So as long as I have an idea in my head of what I want, I don't really need anything to show anybody. But it, it's a nice idea to have this just as kind of like concept art. Um, 
you know, and something. So when I'm writing code, I'm not, oh, do I want to do this or do I want to do this? This way I have a plan of this is what I want to do. I just need to figure out how to make it work. And then that's all I have to stick to. I don't need to be bouncing ideas off walls as I'm writing code. Figuring out, okay, does this work? Does this not work? What works best? Because I just have a picture. I'm like, well, this is what I want to do to make it work if it can. If it can't, I'll have to modify things. But let's aim towards this. And it gives me a, uh, a concrete thing to work towards. So that's that's kind of my spiel on brainstorming. I do definitely think it is a very good idea to do. Um, and, you know, brainstorming isn't necessarily something we can just sit down and brainstorm an entire sub game in, you know, an hour or two. So something you have to be thinking about for a long time. Um, this sub game, actually, I have been... I would say four or five months I've been throwing ideas around in my head um I was kind of working on a, the previous sub game which I did the let's play in and I was kind of getting stagnant in that and I was like you know a lot of the stuff I want to change is so massive that it's going to just break everything in the sub game it's probably better if I just start from scratch and then everything is you know fresh clean slate all my certain functions are all together you know everything's grouped how I think it should be grouped I don't have a crops mod I don't have farming mod I don't have a food mod I don't have plants I don't have you know 10 different mods that are all supplying food all my food is in one mod and when I want to change something I just go into that one mod and just go through those files make those changes and everything's done it's all updated and I'm not juggling through all these different files and cloning repositories from other people and it was just becoming a huge headache, so this was easier for me to just start from scratch. Um, yeah, so don't feel bad if you go and try to do some brainstorming and yet you start with a blank piece of paper and you finish with a blank piece of paper. It happens, okay? For some people, creativity is a little easier than others. You know, sometimes you need to be thinking about something totally different. Go read a book. Go ride your bike, you know? Go do some yard work, you know, do some cleaning, bake something, whatever. I mean, I've had loads of times where great ideas come to me when I'm taking a shower. I was like, oh, hey, this is a, this is what I need to do. And then I get out of the shower and I quick jot it down or sometimes I'll even jump right into a code and be like, let's start writing this code out. I'm super excited about this idea that just came to me while I was showering. So inspiration can strike anywhere is kind of the idea here. So when inspiration strikes, just, you know, have something on you. Everybody carries cell phones these days. Whip your phone out, quick, send yourself an email, throw it in a, you know, a text document or something. And just so you don't forget it, because a lot of times when these great ideas strike you, when you're in the middle of doing something else, if you don't jot it down someplace, it'll disappear as easy as it came. And the worst part is when, then, you know, a couple hours later, like, I had that great idea when I was doing this. Now, what was it? And you can't remember what the idea was, but you remember you had the idea. And you remember that it was the best idea in the world. That is the worst. Kind of like, dude, what was that idea? I remember, I know it was such a good idea, but I don't know what the idea was. I just knew I had the idea. And it, it's horrible. This happens to me a few times. And it's not necessarily just in relation to making sub games it's just life in general you have ideas and if you don't jot them down you forget what the idea was but you remember you had the idea oh it's the worst but i'm gonna shut up now and let you guys go so code is all on github links in the description and on my website feel free to you know download it play it fork it whatever you want, make suggestions for things to change. Um, you know, I, I'll take those ideas into consideration. Not to say that if somebody says, well, I really think that the grass should be purple on this planet, I'm going to go and just make all the grass purple. You know, this is my sub game, I'm going to do what I want. But if someone makes a, makes a suggestion, and I think it's a good suggestion, I will take that in mind and maybe tweak some things around. So, yeah. 
Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time around.